Good afternoon, Kitchissippi. It is Saturday, May the 5th. This is a video version of the 389th Kitchissippi Ward newsletter. I put the newsletter out by email about once a week or so. It has lots of details, links to the issues and topics that we'll be discussing in this video. You can sign up for that at kitchissippiward.ca. Uh, first, I'm sure the ward joins me this weekend in honoring Councillor Diane Deans, who this week has gone into palliative care. Uh, Diane has been a fierce advocate for her ward. She's been a strong and thoughtful um, independent leader around the council table for decades. Uh, many of us have missed her council, her friendship, uh, her mentorship um, since she left uh, City Council at uh, the end of last term. Um, Diane independence is really a model for uh, all of us who sit around the council table and Ottawa is a better place for having had the service of Councillor Diane Deans. I'm thinking this weekend particularly of Councillor Jessica Bradley, her successor to whom I know Diane was a good friend, uh, an important mentor. Um, Diane, farewell. On another note, um, I am having to migrate my uh, website, kitchissippiward.ca, off its current server uh, sooner than I expected. Uh, if there is content on that website that you're looking for, please grab it within the next few days. Um, I will be uh, resurrecting kitchissippiward.ca on a new server, but it looks like we are going to largely have to start fresh. So if there's content that you need for your archives, please go ahead and grab that within the next few days. I have pop-up options office hours coming up this week. Those are going to be on Friday, May the 10th uh, here at the Keith Brown Fieldhouse. So an opportunity if you have not seen the inside of this absolutely uh, stunning fieldhouse model for the rest of the city, I hope you'll pop by between 9 and 11.30 a.m. on Friday, May the 10th. Pop-ups are an opportunity to come by Chat with me about whatever's on your mind one-on-one -on -one, without appointment anytime during those hours. Uh, just reiterating some of the items from the Committee of Adjustment um, report from last week. I still don't have the staff comments on these. At 282 Loretta, the owner is seeking to subdivide the property into three parcels for the construction of three detached dwellings. Uh, they're seeking variances for things like lot width and area, uh, increased building height and attached garages, as well as driveways facing the street. At 155 and 157 Jeffrey, the owner is seeking to subdivide the property to establish separate ownerships for each one of those semi-detached that is currently under construction. And at 113 Northwestern, the owner is seeking to construct a two-story detached dwelling with a double-width garage and driveway and a balcony that won't have opaque screening. Um, I'm uh, since given to understand that uh, the plans may have changed since they originally got their building permit, uh, so now they're having to seek variances. The building be, uh, did begin construction um, as of right, but uh, they are now seeking variances. Another reminder uh, about the Parkdale ramp closures. Those are now going to be uh, starting on May 13th. The eastbound on-ramp is going to be closed from May 13th until August the 25th, and the eastbound off-ramp is going to be closed from May 13th until May 28th. Uh, another note about the Kitchissippi parking study. Staff did add a third open house to take a look at uh, the information upon which they're basing uh, what I assume will be their recommendation to implement paid parking. That third session is going to be held tomorrow night. That's Monday, May 6th, or sorry, um, Monday night, May 6th, uh, at the Westboro Masonic Hall. Uh, the information that have uh, been shown uh, at those open houses are now available on the Engage Ottawa site for the Kitchissippi parking strategy, you can now see those online. The uh, Kitchissippi Community Yard Sale is coming up. It's starting to feel like it's coming a little bit faster. That's going to be held on June the 1st. I and the community associations are hosting that. You've probably seen a little bit of advertising for that now. If you um, want to have your participating household added to the map uh, that I've been um, uh, maintaining, please email me. I'm at jeff.leeper at ottawa.ca. I will uh, make sure to get you on the Google map there that I'm trying to send as far and wide as possible. Um, the housing numbers that I keep track of, the CMHC puts out uh, a big ass spreadsheet once a month with all the housing construction, starts, completions. I pull out the Ottawa data from that and try to present it in um, uh, a more intuitive form. I put up the March numbers. <coughs> 
March numbers now that came out last week. Uh, it continues to be very slow there with respect to both starts um, and completions. March saw an uptick in completions, but overall over the course of this year, we are still behind uh, the number of completions compared to, I believe it's the four years prior, it might be the three, but I've got those numbers up on the KitchenSippyWard.ca website. I've got a link to that in the newsletter. Uh, the race weekend closures have been published. So on Sunday, May the 26th, many of you know that our ward, uh, particularly uh, the um, uh, eastern half of the ward, is affected by the road closures. They look a little bit different this year. Uh, there is some closure on um, uh, Fairmont as usual, but also a section of Gladstone, a section of Rosemount. Um, there is Baby Station road closures. The full map is on Online. If you go to the Tamarack uh, Marathon website, you'll see that list. I have a link to it in the newsletter. Uh, so be aware of some of those road closures that are coming up on Sunday, May the 26th for Ottawa Race Weekend. And uh, for those of you who are preparing, I know you're probably starting to taper soon. Um, if you are participating in the, the half marathon or the marathon, best of luck to you. Uh, that is the uh, experience of a lifetime, obviously, if you're doing it for the first time. And for those of you who are participating in those big mass 5 and 10k events have a ton of fun uh, it is always a great weekend uh, some community notices in the newsletter this weekend Parkdale Food is seeking a volunteer treasurer on its board of director directors if you have a CPA relevant experience would like more information about the position please contact the uh, board chair Deb Abbott uh, I've got more information on what they're seeking and how to make uh, how to um, uh, touch base with them uh, in the newsletter the Westboro's Farmer's Market is uh, going to reopen on May the 18th. Um, there are going to be 60 plus local farmers, makers, food businesses. That's every Saturday um, at the corner sort of Golden and Byron where the market starts from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. Everything is authentic. There are no resellers and produced within 100 kilometers of uh, Ottawa. There is music. Go out, have lunch. Uh, I know everyone enjoys going to the Westboro Farmer's Market in the Byron Linear Park. Um, a couple of other items. The pedal pole, one of my favorite little days, uh, is coming up. That's going to be uh, in the week of June the 4th to 9th. The pedal pole is a citywide, in fact, uh, Canada-wide effort to count cyclists. They're getting some great year-over-year -year data. They're looking for volunteer counters. The instructions are easy. It's a fun, uh, fun um, uh, way to give some service. Uh, Bike Ottawa has got the details on their website. I've got a link in the newsletter. Uh, Don Spruill continues to host his uh, fresks, um, which are citizens' climate change workshops. There are two coming up on Thursday, May the 9th, and Wednesday, May the 22nd. I've got more information about those in the newsletter as well. At City Hall, uh, a couple of meetings coming up. The Finance and Corporate Services Committee that I discussed last week is going to be meeting on Tuesday. That's May the 7th. Uh, should be a very busy meeting as we talk about uh, shifting from a provincial effect Fences Act process to an administrative mon monetary penalty system for the enforcement of uh, traffic violations and of, uh, sorry, of parking violations and of camera infractions. Um, the promise is that that will be a more efficient system. Seems to be borne out by the experience in other jurisdictions. And we'll be taking a look at handing some land at, uh, I think it's 260, 250 Forest Glen in uh, Greenboro to the Ottawa Aboriginal Coalition to create a um, new supportive housing development there for Inuit women. Uh, I know that the local community has been raising some uh, objections and discomfort around that, so we'll have that debate at the Finance and Corporate Services Committee. Um, you can see the full agenda online. I've got a link to it, of course, in the newsletter. Uh, the Planning and Housing Committee is going to meet the next day. That's Wednesday, May the 8th. Uh, really, the only substantive item we have is a look at um, a provisional bylaw for our development charges. Development charges are the fees that builders get charged when they build new housing that offset the cost of capital projects that have been identified in our master plan. So as we grow, uh, we're going to grow in the way that dictated by the official plan. You would do a bunch of master plans from that that describe the projects that need to be built in order to support the growth that we anticipate. Um, the big ones are the transportation master plan, the infrastructure master plan, 
plan. We don't have those yet, um, and so it's just a provisional bylaw that we're going to be passing. I know there's some discussion among the builders of a, um, uh, a phase-in for that rather than coming in place immediately. Uh, there normally is a phase-in period for development charges when new ones are done, and the development charges are taking a, a big leap. Those development charges generally get passed on to the home buyers or else are calculated into the rents of the people who move into those buildings. So we, uh, we are um, uh, constrained from just uh, jacking those up, but I know that'll be a topic for discussion at the FinCo meeting that is on um, Wednesday, May 8th. The Built Heritage Committee is meeting with a relatively short agenda this time. They've been very active. Uh, we've been uh, designating and uh, dealing with the, the fallout from Bill 23 for a few months now, but this meeting is relatively straightforward. We'll be debating uh, the creation of a monument to honor the victims of the Irish famine in uh, Bytown. We're also going to consider the objection by the owner of the building at City Centre, where the Orange Gallery is right now, to our proposed um, designation of that building as a heritage building. The staff recommendation is to stay the course. Uh, and then there is also a, an application for a permit to demolish the building at 267 O'Connor. Uh, that's to deal with a, um, a, a new development there that uh, I think has been approved a couple of times. So I anticipate that will be uh, fairly easy. And in addition to uh, those two meetings, uh, PHC and uh, FINCO, we'll also, uh, the French Language Advisory Committee will be meeting on May the 9th. Um, I've got my uh, section in the newsletter uh, from the Rosemount Library. They've sent me their list of activities. As always, it's a long list of activities. Uh, there is an armchair uh, chair travel session to Iceland, an NFB screen uh, film screening of a film, Kimapitisini. Uh, I've forgive me on that, the meaning of empathy, uh, which will be shown uh, coming up on Friday, May 17th. There's an NFB film screening, To Kill a Tiger. There is a session on how to secure a home wireless network. And of course, that's all in addition to the usual weekly programs, uh, Baby Time, Family Story Time, Stay and Play, Tween Gaming, French Conversation Group, Rosemount Knitting Group, and more. I've got a link to all of that in the newsletter. So Kitchisippi, um, the weather is turning. I am feeling hot as I stand out here. That's the first time I felt that in a few weeks. Uh, unfortunately, gophers have eaten all my tulips. I hope yours have uh, been spared by the critters. Kijasipi, have a great week and thanks for watching. Bye.